So what I want to do is redefine this word absolute. I told you earlier, you got absolute power. And now I have taken away some of these powers through zoning laws, through the right. Uh, you realize that police powers affect your control, like zoning. You can't do with it what you want. HOA, you can't paint your house certain colors. You've got eminent domain, which has the right of possession. You've got taxation. You've got uh, SG, which has the right of disposition. So we are curtailing those. But I want you to know is nobody gets those. This is this space right here. So from here on out, the rest of this chapter, when I say absolute, I mean this amount because nobody gets that amount added. All right, so now let's go back and let's start this thing over. Now that we understand that there is a different definition of the word absolute. So welcome to today's course on the interests in real estate. We are going to talk about an estate in land. An estate in land. So in your book, Flip back over to page 34. We are going to talk about an estate. An estate is the degree or the ownership amount that you have actually possessed of those interests that we talked about. Remember the five bundles of rights? You've got control, disposition, quiet enjoyment, exclusion, and possession. That's what we're talking about. What degree do you own those? That would be or defines your estate in the property. Now, an estate is different than the word interest. People can have an interest in the property. That is not an estate. The difference between an estate and an interest is defined by one thing, possession, all right? So your bank who does not possess your house may have an interest in it where you have an estate in the property because you possess it and are actually living in it. <clears throat> the state of Indiana's real estate taxes may have an interest in your property, but they do not have an estate. It's very key that you understand that what separates an interest versus an estate is literally just the possession. Otherwise, you have an interest if you don't possess it. You have an estate if you do possess it. Now, when it comes to that possession or that estate, it is characterized in one of two ways. And the, what characterizes that section of possession is the time in which you possess it. It's the amount of time that you possess it. Actually, there's a typo here on the screen. If you've got your notes, please notice there it says interest is defined by possession. It is not. An interest is not defined by possession. Little small word right there makes a big difference. The possession is defines an estate. And that estate, do two arrows, that estate is characterized or classified by one of two ways. There is this thing called a freehold estate, and that is for an undeterminable amount of time. The way I remember it is freehold is forever. All right? How do you own property forever? You pass it down your lineage. When our parents passed away, my brother moved into our family home that we grew up in, so we still possess that property 60 years later. 
All right. So a freehold estate, which is defined by possession, and that possession's length of time is indeterminable. For those of you that own a house out there, think about this. What day did you buy the house? It doesn't matter. When are you going to sell it? You don't know. It's an undeterminable amount of time. Contrast that with the second style of an estate, which is called a leasehold estate. And I should hope that you see the word in there that helps you figure this out. Lease. That is a defined period of time. Or the way that I remember it is using the word limited. Limited. So a freehold estate is an undefined amount of time that you possess the property, which makes it freehold and an estate. A leasehold is a defined period of time, like a year, that you would own the property. Now, a leasehold estate is so important that we are actually going to have a whole chapter on leases. And this chapter here in this class will be the last time that we actually ever mention it because we are going to spend the rest of the amount of time on a freehold estate, all right? A freehold estate. Now, in this freehold estate, it is a possess defined by possession because it's an estate. It's freehold because it's undefined. We do not know when we're going to sell the property. But we've got to talk about the degree to which we own it. Well, there are several ways to describe that degree to which we own the property. And if we transfer those five rights, it is called fee simple. So understand that fee simple is the description of the level where freehold is the description of the time of that estate. Freehold is undefined. Fee simple is all five of these rights. If I transfer the highest degree of ownership that I can, it is called fee simple absolute. Remember what absolute means. Absolute means every property, oh, lost my drawing. <laughs> All those rights except the amount that the government keeps. Nobody gets those. We've redefined absolute. So if I transfer all of the rights, highest possible, except the limitations for uh, Pete, that is called fee simple absolute. All right. Now, Think about back to my water, and let's see if we can go back to this and do it again. Think about this glass of water, and we're going to stick with this analogy. This would be fee simple absolute right in here, because these governmental powers, nobody gets, that's the governmental powers. So I'm going to transfer the highest rights, fee simple, absolute. Think of this glass of water. Now, I can, it's my right. I have the right of disposition. I own it currently. I have title. And remember, title says I have the rights. The right of disposition is one of my rights. I don't want to transfer the full glass of water. So let's stick with my analogy. I could take that full glass of water and pull, pour some of it out and actually give you what is called a defeasance. A defeasance is a real big fancy word that means uh, with a condition. Uh, it's got to be in your work. Somewhere. And a defeasance, there are two of them that we deal with. I think this version leaves out the actual word. Uh, they have the word defeasible in there. So there are two 
types of defeasances, defeasi, if you will, that we will talk about. And for this class, I really don't want to get in depth to the extent of why one would be used over the other. This is not a law class. There are certain things that the only thing I'm going to tell you is the thing that I want you to know about court cases and all of that. So there is a fee simple defeasible, meaning it is qualified or has a limitation or subject to some specification. That specification could be requiring you to do something or requiring you not to do something. So don't confuse these two things. Let's give you a couple examples. There is this thing called fee simple determinable. Fee simple determinable exists when there is the use the word so long as, while, or during, all right? So I want you to have the property, but so long as you own it, you must maintain a church upon that property, all right? That could be a determinable. There is a thing called a subject to a condition subsequent. A condition subsequent. A condition subsequent ensures that the condition of ownership has to be met. So we were just involved in one a, long, uh, a couple of months ago where the seller sold 10 acres off his farm beside his house. And in that, instead of selling fee simple absolute and giving the new buyer all the power, he actually put a condition or a defeasance on the property that said, I will sell you the 10 acres, but you cannot subdivide it further than, or to smaller than this 10 acres. So what he was trying to do was keeping that new buyer from buying it, subdividing it, build houses, and create a housing addition because the farmer did not want that beside his house. But he'd sell it to another guy that wanted 10 acres to maybe run his four-wheelers on or have horses on or hunt deer on or whatever. He just couldn't subdivide it. That was the issue. And when the new owner bought it, he agreed to it. Of course, he has to agree to it because the seller is the one that would determine no pun intended with that word, if there's going to be a defeasance upon that property. I want to sell it, so it would be fee simple condition subsequent, or fee simple determinable, that would then name whatever condition there needs to be. Do not subdivide the property. Now, when that happens, or should that violation occur, here is the most important part. In a fee simple, uh, determinable, when that property is, if that defeasance has been violated, it would automatically revert back to the owner. All right? So if it's a fee simple condition subsequent, and that condition is violated, the old owner actually has the right to re-enter, but he has to bring legal action for that to happen. All right, so those are the two things I want you to really know. Don't get confused on the names. Determinable versus condition subsequent. As far as we want to know, there is this thing called fee simple determinable which is the right of re-entry automatically and fee simple condition subsequent actually involves legal action for it to happen. No legal action, 